What is up everybody? My name is Zach and welcome back to Case Digital. In this video, we're going to be talking about the difference between an interactive shell and a Python script. So without further ado, let's jump in and start code. So in the last couple of videos, we've installed Python, we've learned about variables, and in this video, I know I was going to talk about the different data types in Python, but I wanted to switch gears real quick and talk about using a the interactive shell or an interactive shell versus using a Python script. The reason being is um, going forward, I'm probably going to do a lot more of stuff using an actual Python script rather than the interactive shell. That's just how I've learned to program or do some Python programming, um, and that's just what makes me most comfortable. And so, and primarily with the interactive shell, such as if we go and, and, and open up the idle interactive shell, so go to applications and go open up this. So I primarily use these interactive shells as my quick and dirty checks. Just to check to make sure that, hey, I got this math equation correct and or, um, hey, can I import this um, package or module, which we'll talk about more in the future. Um, and just, it's basically, it's just my sanity check. You know, something if like, oh, like I can't, for whatever reason, if I can't think of something off the top of my head, say I have this variable and I assign it equal to five. And well, what's, you know, that variable times 758 like I don't want to do it off the top of my head I don't have a calculator nearby I can just pull this up real quick and boom it tells me it's 3790 so that's what I use these interactive shells for people can you can run Python scripts through these shells um, I don't necessarily do that you can but I like to use uh, what's called an IDE um, or an integrated developer environment. Um, the primary one that I use is Visual Studio Code. And I'll do a video on setting up Visual Studio Code and helping for Python programming and whatnot. But essentially what happens is in Visual is when, when you want to do a script, a script will basically just you can you write everything out and then when you do when you want to execute it you have to do this Python command plus your file name and it'll execute and it'll just basically go from top down It'll execute everything in that. If you have stuff printing out, it'll print everything out to show you what they are. If you don't, it'll just run everything through. And that's what I want to show you today. So I have this folder set up. I'm going to add a file to it, and I'm going to call it our Hello World script. World. And now to make a Python script, you need to do your file name, and then do the extension is .py. And that tells um, our computer that we've since that we're, We've installed Python and that we want to run a Python application. So in, in this, if we just do the clip, is print hello, I can spell, world. And by doing this now, I can save this and I can open a terminal. So you can go to the top where it says terminal up here, or you can hit control tilde, and it'll open up a terminal for you. And when it opens that up, I mean, it's in my folder. Um, if I do ls, it'll show, so that'll list everything in the folder. That'll tell me, hey, look, there's hellworld.py. Now, to run a Python script, what you have to do is you need to do the keyword Python, and do a space, and then do your, the name of your file, hello world. Now I'm going to do tab complete, so I'll just hit tab, and then it says hello pi. And now when I hit enter, it should say hello world. Oh, there it is. Perfect. You've written your first Python script. Congratulations. Um, so we can do more things, like you can go in, you can do like I did before, I can say num is equal to 5, um, num, time, or num, num is now equal to uh, num times 758, and now if I just run this, what do you think is going to happen? It should just say hello world, right? Because we didn't tell it to print everything out, and so when you do a print, that's just telling you to print stuff out to the console. Otherwise, it just runs and does everything else in the background. Now, if I wanted to print this out, I would say print num. Save it. You can, uh, on a Mac, it's command S. Come down here. I'm going to hit the up arrow. And that's going to bring up the last command that I just did. And it's going to show you Python, hello world. And then make sure that says that. And then I'm just going to, or hello world.py. And then do hit enter. And now you see it says hello world. And then... 3,790. So that's the difference between a Python script versus the, an interactive shell. Now what's nice about this IDE, which I really love Visual Studio Code, is I can actually do an interactive shell within my console. So if I just go in here and like what we did before, if I just do Python and nothing else and hit enter, there it is. Just like we saw with um, idle, this 
just like we saw with this part up here with an idle, when we come back over here, we see that same exact stuff down here. And I can do the same exact thing. Oops. I get down here and hit num is equal to five. Num plus uh, or num times 758. And you can see that the main difference is um, one of the main differences is that when I do num times 750 or 768 here, up here to get num, it just tells me the value. Now, if I wanted num to be replaced, like if I do right here num and hit enter, it's still five. Up here, because I reassigned it, that's why we get the, and I then printed it, it gets 3,840. Oh, because I did 58 instead of 68. Um, but if I essentially wanted to print that, if I just wanted to print this, num times 768. Now to exit the terminal, or exit the command, or the interactive shell, you hit control D, that gets out. Now I can do python, hello world.py, hit enter, and now 3840. So that's basically it, they do the same thing. Um, and but I like to code in this because we'll do a lot more stuff with Python scripts. Until then, keep practicing, keep playing around, and keep coding. And we'll see you next time.